Fernando Pimentel of TheBoxingVoice.com here with Ken Porter. Yes. Ken, PBC on NBC, June 20th. Sean Porter versus Adrian Broner. Yeah. First off, talk to us about how this fight came about. And I got a phone call, and they said, uh, you know, we're trying to get you a fight. Um, here's some of the names. I said, who you got number one? They said, Adrian Broner. I said, we'll take it. You know, so it pretty much on our part was an easy thing to do. Our preparation was already there. Uh, we were already in shape. We were already on weight. And uh, when they said, well, you know, he won't take the fight unless you guys come down to 142 or 143 pounds. And I said, well, he was a world to weight world champion. Why can't he take the fight? And they said, well, he, 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 he just says he won't do it. Okay, well, we'll make the fight. So we kind of negotiated back and forth, and we settled on 144 pounds. Now, you got to understand the reasoning for that is because he wouldn't fight us at 147. We could be fighting for a welterweight world title, one of the titles that Mayweather is relinquishing. But he would not want to, you know, he wouldn't want to take that fight at, with Sean at a full 147. So we agreed to 144. We said yes to it, and here we are. Like you said, he actually fought. Twice yeah. as a welterweight. He fought Pauli Malinaji and then he fought Madonna. Obviously, he lost that fight. A lot of people see many similarities in the style between Madonna and Porter. Do you think that is the reason why he settled for 144 to drop Porter down three well, pounds? He's, he's looking for some type of advantage. That's obvious to anybody that's looking at it. But, you know, for us, again, we were already prepared to fight. We were doing everything we could to get the co-main event on the Mayweather Pacquiao card. So we were in shape, we were ready to roll, and when we got the phone call, it was just a matter of making a few adjustments. And as Sean said today, he hasn't felt better than he's ever felt before in his life. And so I'm very happy to say that, you know, right now, you know, he's within eight pounds of the fight weight. We've been within 10 pounds of the fight weight like 25, 26 days before weigh-ins. He's, he's feeling good right now. Now, beyond the weight that he has to weigh in on that day, there's also a rehydration clause. How is that going to take into effect? And that's easy because we've always done that the day after a fight for IBF. That was their rules. So we did it in Davin Alexander fight. We've done it in the uh, Brook fight. We've done it in the Pauli Malignaggi fight. We've done it in other fights before that leading up to that because we had their like uh, regional title so this is nothing new for us but when you live this way year round you don't go over 10 pounds because you don't you, you understand what I'm saying you don't take the weight off in a, um, a a fast in a short period of time so it doesn't jump back on you in a, in a in a fast period of time as well so it's not a problem for us at all now Adrian alluded to it during the press conference you guys know each other very well yeah. you guys have sparred with him there's no secret to that no. talk to us about what you expect Adrian to bring into this fight versus Sean and what he could do versus Sean I fully expect him to be terrified that's what my full expression if he's anything less than terrified when he gets in the ring with Sean I will be shocked now anything less than terrified means you come in a fight we love it let's get it you know what I mean that that plays right into our hands uh, I fully fully expect him to hold duck dodge and maybe possibly try to counter punches the problem with that type of fight against a guy like sean is you can't counter a guy that's constantly on you constantly throwing punches you can counter one punch here or there a guy jabs you can jab with him or you can counter him with a right hand but when a guy is throwing first second third series of punches he's got tremendous uh, 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 execution and tremendous conditioning that never gets tired, he's strong, he's fast, we're just as fast, we're faster. Uh, I'm sure Devin Alexander was considered one of the fastest welterweights. We showed in that We showed in that fight, we're just as fast as Devin Alexander. If I take a look at it and do the math, one plus one equaling two, you take a look at Marcos Maidana, and you take a look at Devin Alexander, Devin outboxes Marcos Maidana and wins that decision, but Sean completely handled Devin Alexander in their fight. If you take a look at Marco, uh, uh, Pauli Malignaggi versus Adrian Bronner, you will see a close fight there, and then we know what happened with Sean and Pauli Malignaggi. Adrian knows that as well, back to your psychological uh, advantage. advantage that he has to deal with. Also, the fact that Adrian was our sparring partner. We paid Adrian to come five hours down the road to put him in a hotel and paid him to be Sean's sparring partner. OK, so all of these things he's going to carry into the ring and he's going to have those questions. We have the answers. 
Now, Adrian was in the media room right now. They asked him about sparring sessions between you and him, and he kind of brushed it off and made it seem like he was the dominant fighter in that. Talk to us about it. Let us know if that was really the case. No, not at all. Not at all. But in the sparring sessions that we use Adrian, you got to understand this, we didn't use Adrian in a, in, in a way to be uh, a dominant fighter. We needed Adrian to move because we were fighting a guy that could move. So I just told him, I said, listen, bring him. I know he can't, you know, stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sean, but I need him to move. And so he knew he was coming in to run. So if dominating running from us was what he caused dominating, he did a good job at running. But, you know, at the end of the deal, you know, we paid him and that's enough and that's all we need. Now, when we spar with him again, quote, unquote, Adrian said, coach, I know you need me to work harder with Sean. I can't do it. He's just too strong. Okay, so... Those questions will be answered on fight night. We'll be able to see whether Adrian has progressed from that, if he's coming to the fight to show that he can fight better. If he chooses to fight with us, great. If he chooses to hold or try to counterpunch, we'll prepare for that as well. Now, just an eye test. Yeah. From what you've seen from Adrian in his past few fights, since you guys have sparred with him and everything, yeah. what have you seen in progression? I haven't seen any progression. There's no progression at all. You know what I mean? We're talking about John Molina, who absolutely didn't show any aggression at all throughout the 12 rounds that they fought or 10 rounds that they fought. He didn't show any aggression to try to win the fight. Quote, unquote, his coach in the corner saying, you got to do something if you want to win this fight. So he never did. And that let Adrian be able to do what he wanted to do. But we're not going to let him be comfortable. He's not going to be comfortable in, in a fight with us. Now, what could the fans expect June 20th from Sean Porter versus Adrian Brown? You know what? You can expect uh, pretty much a pit bull chasing a cat. That's pretty much what it's going to be like. You know, it's, it, it's pretty much going to be a dog versus a cat. Fernando of theboxingvoice.com here with the one and only Ken Porter. We'll see you guys at the fight June 20th. Thanks. Thank you for your time. Right, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.